trust. Uh, for those who haven't met me in person yet, my name is Kira Haggard. I'm the city's project manager, so you've probably gotten a few emails from me already. Um, thank you. We got a ton of applicants for this advisory committee, and um, I really appreciate how excited everyone was, and we're really, really pleased to have you be here and, and be part of this process. Um, I'm not going to do a ton of talking tonight. I'm going to turn it over to Matt, um, who is a part of our consultant team and leading the consultant team. I think we're going to do a round of introductions first, but just wanted to introduce myself. So, yeah, so I am Matt PC. Um, I'm the project manager for the consultant team. I will do kind of a bunch of talking, so apologies in advance for that. Um, and so, yeah, I thought we will start by just going around the room. We'll go this way. I would say introduce yourself if you are affiliated with any particular group or organization. Tell us that. And then I would also ask you to tell us um, your favorite park or recreational facility or natural area in Lake Oswego and why that's your favorite. Maybe just to kind of learn more about how you use the park system and what you like about it. Um, so we'll start with Jan. Well, hello everyone. I'm Jan Wirtz and I'm the Recreation Deputy Director. And um, my favorite park, I would say, is Lesher Farm. And I love that area. And uh, that's currently my favorite park. And then I believe the Laura will be my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Maria Vigilow. I am the manager of the Adult Center, um, the Adult Community Center. I think I was putting a word. And my favorite are probably the Belugas. I love um, the sports aspect of the baseball fields and then the mixed use on the other side. Uh, my name is Jeff Merrill. I'm deputy director of the Park Snack and Golf. And I love all of our parks because we're in all times, but golf's probably up there right now. So, especially with the new course. Uh, in, uh, getting ready to go. My name is Kevin Watson. I'm the chair of the library advisory board, and probably the one we use the most is the new booking term on the streets. I'm Aaron Honsett. I'm representing the DEI board for the city. Also, I work at Lake Oswego High School. And um, yeah, I like them all. I'm a runner, so I often use Strava and like hunt around for little trails that I haven't found. And that's my favorite part of the parks here is the ones that are kind of off the beaten track. That, you might not know about them. I'm Terry Bianco. I'm uh, representing the uh, Transportation Advisory Board. I'm also on the Glen Morey Neighborhood Association Board. And uh, as a Glen Morey person, uh, George Rogers has got to be right up there, um, as well as Foothills, Roar. I can't wait to that, that connecting pathway. It's built. so excited. Hi, everybody. I'm Julie Haddad. Um, no affiliation, just representing myself here. And I would say Blusher as well. Um, we relocated here in 2020 from Minnesota and we lived just down the road. And that was the place that we could go when we were locked indoors. It was amazing. Um, the fact that my dogs, my boys, my husband, we all can use it in different ways has been pretty amazing for us. And then I have to represent my family here too a little bit and say that they would be right up there with the cult. <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> I'm Meg Matsushima and I'm representing, I'm the vice chair of the um, HREV, the Historic Advisory Board. And <clears throat> I think uh, Lesher Farm is also my favorite, um, but I, we live in Mountain Park and I just love all the trails and the ability to be out in nature when you're really close to your house. So, I'm Whitney Taylor, um, not with any affiliation, but live in Bryant Woods. And um, I would have to say our family lives Iron Mountain City Park. We actually had our son's third or fourth birthday party there. And we just love it, love that we can jump in a little hike and have some covered area to enjoy. And my name is Patrick Gutierrez, and I'm on the board of the uh, Park Council for Lake Oswego, as well as the um, Watershed Council. And I live in Mount Park, but um, so I love all the parks. But I think Triumph Creek is maybe my favorite because they're hiking all the time. It's just it's amazing. But you know, Westlake Park, George Rogers, they're all so good. So yeah, thank you. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Kara Orviano, Ashley, go by Kara Orviano. I'm on the City Sustainability Advisory Board. Um, I think probably the nearest and dearest to my heart is Westlake Park. I also live in Mount Park. I taught my kid to ride her bike there, took tennis lessons there. Um, go to all the concerts in the park and all the good stuff but um the adult community center even though it's not a park definitely has a special place in my heart because i take all my exercise classes there. my name's uh, matt mcginnis i'm uh, i'm not representing any organization although i'm all been on the parks board so i have some service representative from the parks board um, I live in Lake Grove and use Iron Mountain and Beluga a lot. I love Beluga because it's got so much to do. There's even a bike uh, yeah, that my grandson likes to go on. It, and, um, it's, I don't know what's called, like a motocross trail or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of hidden up there. Many yeah. people know about it, but my dogs love it too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> running around the track. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm just a fan of, of all the diversity that we have in uh, in our park system and uh, looking forward to expanding it and, and uh, working with it here. Uh, my name is Jen Meyer. I'm not affiliated with any group. Um, I probably should start by saying I do have a visual disability. So if I look at you straight on, you disappear. So I have to look off to the side to see you. So just want to put that out there so you're not offended if I don't look straight at you. Um, and uh, my family loves national parks and in prep for going to explore all of them, we took a challenge of visiting all the parks in Lake Oswego. And uh, I probably would cheat to say I like them all, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely like Cook's Butte. And um, we live right next to Foothills and Aurora, so special to us. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Sarah Ellison, and I'm the liaison from the uh, Parks Board. Uh, I've served on the Parks Board for several years, three or four, I think. Um, and my favorite park is probably Helen Ann Woods. It's the nearest and dearest to my heart and my home, and I got involved in parks because I was advocating for the expansion of the woods there. Um, and we, we walk through it every day, with the kid, taking the kids to school. And, my kids can point out like which ferns they planted for uh, you know planting parties and stuff. So uh, we have a close connection with it. But um, yes, I also love all the other parks that were mentioned <laughs> and um, and the playground that George Rogers was a lifesaver um, during the pandemic. That was our recess. We went there every day for lunch. Um, yeah. So. Uh, I'm Heather Rudetsky, community member. I live in Old Town, so I'm using George Rogers the most. My husband runs on that path and then up to the Old Town Road. We walk up the creek. Um, that way, we tend to favor the parks with long trails and paths. Um, it's a great walking town, despite the lack of sidewalks. Um, yeah, I just... Uh, Grew up in Oregon, so I'm a park lover and native plants lover. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jessa. I'm a planner with the consultant team. Um, and I don't live in Lake Oswego. I will say, growing up, we had uh, family reunions at George Rogers Park every year. So I was very excited to learn that I would be working on this project. So I'm excited to support. Uh, I'm Evan Franstead. I'm a senior planner and I work in planning division. I worked on um, Iron Mountain Park, Receipt Park, and Golf Course, and all. So I guess I'm a little partial, I'd say, Iron Mountain Park because I just remember what it looked like before that. Yeah, it was rough. <laughs> Nobody much. Um, we also have Robin online, Robin Krakauer. Do you want to unmute yourself, Robin? Can you hear me? Uh oh. Can you hear me? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Hello? We hear you, Robin. Oh, you do? Uh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. Sorry, having some 
technical difficulties here on the other end of the screen, but um, I look forward to meeting you all in person and working with you in the future. Thanks, Robin. Robin is our communications specialist um, for Parks and Recreation. All right. Um, so we'll, in, a, in just a minute, um, we'll kind of run through the agenda for the meeting. I'll say just a little bit more about kind of, I'll call the project team, which is a combination of city staff and then members of the consultant team. So when I talk about we, I'm usually talking about somebody in the team other than myself. Um, maybe Jessa, maybe Kira, maybe Lauren back in my office. So um, um, staff is pretty well represented here tonight, um, although there's a couple other staff folks who um, are putting a lot of work into this process. Um, and then there's a couple of other members of the consulting team who are with other consulting firms um, but are on the team. So I'll mention them just briefly. Um, one is called DHM Research, and they are on the team to conduct a survey. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the meeting. Um, and then the other is called Gilardi Rothstein. They are a financial analysis firm. Um, they will be looking at what's called the park system uh, system development charges, which is one of the ways that the city helps um, pay for improvements to parks. So they're on this the team because they specialize in that and they'll help us in looking at um, that aspect of funding, but also just generally, you know, how does the city pay for um, new facilities, improvements to facilities, and the operation and maintenance of facilities? So they're not here tonight, but you may see them at future meetings. Um, so I just wanted to mention them before we get started. Um, maybe go to the next slide and we'll just kind of talk about what we're doing here this evening. I will warn you that tonight is mostly like a chance for us to give you information and kind of orient you all to the project. We'll have a couple of questions for you. And I would say, as um, we're talking or going through information, and it's mostly going to be me, so you'll probably be really tired of hearing my voice by the end of the evening. But do raise your hands if you have a question about something I'm talking about um, or that you're talking about. And, and we've got enough time on the agenda tonight to be able to, to do that. Um, so just let me know. But mostly we'll be kind of talking to you, we'll, we'll pause a couple points and just kind of see if you have questions or comments, you know, if you think there's gaps in what we've been presenting or information you're not seeing or hearing that you'd like to know more about. So that's kind of the way this meeting is going to go in general. So uh, we've kind of done the first part, the welcome. We'll talk a little bit about kind of expectations of all of you, your roles and responsibilities. Um, we have kind of a pretty high level overview of the project. Let's talk about the different tasks and work products or deliverables and kind of how that flows, um, including um, community engagement, the different ways in addition to meetings of this group that we'll be um, using to um, talk to other folks in the community and get them to talk to us and find out what their priorities and goals um, and desires are related to the park system. Um, and I will generally say park system instead of parks, recreation, and natural resources system. So I'll kind of shorthand it. Um, so we'll talk about that in particular, um, including some of the things we're doing earlier in the process, like in the next month or so. Um, then we'll provide um, an uh, overview of some of the highlights of the document that we sent out to you in advance of the meeting, the state of the system summary or report. So. We won't go through that in a ton of detail, but we'll kind of hit some of the highlights of that. Um, we reserve some time towards the end of the meeting for public comment from folks who are not on the committee. So if we have anybody that like wanders in off the street um, or is online, oh, we do have a couple of options. So if they have something they want to ask us about or say at the end, we'll reserve some time for that. And we'll make sure we do that um, at each of our meetings. Um, and then we'll just kind of wrap up the next step. So. That's the agenda. Um, so that all makes sense. Any questions about that? Fairly clear. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So onward. And again, yeah, just you know, do let me know if you have any questions um, as we go along, and I'll try to stop and at least occasionally ask you questions. Um, and I'd say in subsequent meetings, where there will be more kind of back and forth and more opportunities for us to ask you to weigh in on specific things. But tonight, uh, for good or ill, not as much. So, all right, so next one. 
So roles and responsibilities of the committee. Um, uh, you know, you, if you've served on other committees, it's probably going to look pretty familiar to you. Um, first of all, of course, come to meetings, um, either in person or if you can't make it online. Um, we know there will be conflicts. We don't expect every person to come to every meeting, but we want you to come to as many of them as you can, participate in them um, in as many as you can. Um, ultimately, you're here to help guide uh, the project and process um, goals, the parks plan goals and the recommendations that come out of this process. Um, we uh, will need your help in identifying needs and priorities for the community, for the park system. Um, so you'll be reviewing and commenting on documents like today we sent you out the community engagement plan uh, and the state of the system report. So we want to get your feedback on those documents. Again, what's missing, um, if there are any um, gaps or just things you don't see covered in there that you think are important for us to, to know about and focus on. Um, ultimately, um, we'll be looking at and identifying improvements to um, the city's system and specific facilities. And we're gonna want your, your feedback on those. You know, which things do you think make sense? If you think some things don't make sense, what's the highest priority from your perspective? Things like that. Um, this group has a lot of different folks and perspectives on it. And that's really important to hear from a variety of perspectives. So we want to hear kind of your individual thoughts and perspectives on things. Ultimately, we need to produce a park system plan that meets all the needs of you know everybody in the community. So we do want you to sort of think about things to the extent you can, you know, from both, you know, what's most important to me, but what do I think at the end of the day is best for the entire community? It's a little can be a little tough to do, but that's a perspective that's important as well, especially when we're thinking about priorities for particular things. Um, so that. Um, and then just, you know, participate, um, join in the discussions, be construction, constructive, excuse me, um, solution oriented. Um, that's important, respectful of others on the committee. Again, I expect you've heard all these kind of things before um, in other groups you've participated in. So I think that's, that's my rundown. Did I miss anything? No, I'll throw in a couple of logistical awesome. notes. Um, I'll be the one, like I did for this meeting, emailing you your packet in advance of the meetings. And if you have any like scheduling conflicts or you can't come, it would be helpful if you could let me know. That obviously, sometimes you get sick and you just don't show up and that, that's fine. But generally, direct any sort of scheduling um, concerns to me. And then there's one other thing that's going to add. Oh, if you want to join virtually for future meetings, um, I think. For advisory committee discussion, it's generally easier if everyone's kind of in the same room, but we have a hybrid option available if you need to take advantage of that. The easiest way to do it is to let me know in advance and I can get you a panelist link so it's easier for you to like mute and unmute and be part of the conversation. So um, just let me know if you need that. Yeah, and then I would say also just um, between meetings, if you have questions, comments, mm -hmm. need to get any information to folks, Get it to Kira, yeah. and then she'll share it with um, the rest of the folks on the team. So, yeah. awesome. So, does that make sense? Any questions or thoughts about that? Okay, all right. You're an easy group so far. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, process. Um, this this graphic kind of gives you, and it's probably pretty hard to see from. Oh, it's not too bad. Maybe. Well, I don't know about back there. I can see it pretty well, but. Um, it kind of lays out the different um, elements of the process and it kind of focuses a lot on um, some of the community engagement um, activities that we're undertaking. So I'll go over this at, you know, again, a pretty high level. I have it on my piece of paper, but it's even tinier. So I'm going to actually look up at the screen. It'll be easier for me to do. So we got started um, this summer um, and the sort of first task for us, couple first tasks. Um, one were to assess existing conditions of the park system. That's what kind of that first task is, and that's what that state of the system summary is. It's kind of our the consulting team's assessment of the system with help from, um, with a lot of help um, from city staff, um, those members of the project team. And then also we put together that community engagement plan and started to put together some community engagement related materials. So some basic stuff, a project logo, 
um, kind of a poster board that Kira could take out um, to farmers markets and other events and just kind of tell people. It's going to be at the Lake Road Farmers Market on Saturday if anyone's going to be there too. There you go. So materials for that um, started working on the plan for and schedule for the survey, which I'll talk about um, in a little bit. So really just kind of got going in the summer on getting ready for and planning for some of the community engagement efforts and then doing this um, assessment. Um, we also, um, staff and uh, consulting team members went out and did a tour of not all the parks, but a bunch of them. Super helpful, very fun. Um, always like one of the best sort of work days for me is to go out and walk around in parts. Um, so that was great. And we'll talk more about that later in the um, presentation as well. Um, so that's kind of the first um, step um, of the process. Next is to identify uh, kind of an overall vision and a set of goals and objectives for the parks plan. Um, you know, this is an update of an existing parks plan, um, which was prepared in 2012, adopted in 2012. So it's park plan 2025. So these are about, you know, 15 year plans. This is park plan 2040. So it takes the city sort of through that time period. So we're not starting with a blank slate in terms of things, thinking about vision, goals, policies, actions. Um, so we'll start with that. We'll see what's still relevant, what still makes sense, and then what needs to be added or changed in part based on that initial assessment we did. Um, and we'll put that together. We'll work with staff on that. We'll bring that back to you. That'll be the topic of our kind of main topic of our next meeting. Um, and it shows up up there as vision goals and objectives. And then over the next several months, um, we'll be working on a future needs assessment, needs for specific types of um, park improvements or changes in the way the city maintains parks or operates parks. So we've got kind of actually like a series of um, assessments we do during that process. Um, so we'll be working on that, bringing that back to all of you. Um, prioritizing improvements, and then going into this implementation and action planning phase. So the kind of the vision and goals is this fall, the needs assessment and recommendations kind of goes um, through winter of this year, late fall, winter. And then next spring and early summer, we're working on the implementation and action plan. So it's sort of once we've said, hey, there are these are the types that needed types of facilities or types of recreational programs or changes um, or enhancements to maintenance and operations. How does that happen? How is that implemented over the course of the next 15 years? Um, what are the specific actions the city and partners need to undertake to do that? So that's what we're working on then. Um, and then we're sort of putting all that together into the updated plan, um, putting together a level eight document that that encompasses all that previous work and information, and then ultimately taking it through uh, an adoption process with the city. And ultimately, it's the city council's adopting this plan um, as a formal city document to guide the parks system, you know, for the next 15 years. So the overall schedule shows us finishing up um, in approximately February of 2025. I think like the original schedule went out even a little further, but um, we think that's probably pretty reasonable. Um, so we got like a little bit of wiggle room if we need it, but I hope we don't just because I like to stay on schedule. Um, I'm an ex engineer, so I like to just things you know, moving along. Um, and so throughout the process, all the stuff kind of in the middle of this um, graphic shows you meetings of this group. So you can see we've got uh, seven meetings of this group scheduled for the process. We're meeting with the Parks Recreation Natural Resource Areas Board um, also several times throughout the process. Each of those meetings sort of corresponds with us completing um, a work product or a set of preliminary recommendations or assessment coming back to you all, coming back to the park board and getting their opinion um, and your opinion on that. So that's kind of how those meetings are set. They're set to, to um, sync up with that. Um, we'll also be briefing the city council several times during the process, to make sure that you know they're on board and, and following our work and we don't get to the end of the process and see them for the first time. And they're like, that doesn't make any sense to us. We don't ever want to do that. So we're going to make sure we're talking to them regularly. 
And then um, we'll also be doing um, some other, particularly kind of early and midway through the process, some larger community um, events. So um, we've got an uh, uh, online survey um, that's actually just happening, I think, starting up this week. The calling and texting this week. Yes. So it's a statistically valid survey, so they'll call and text and do that sort of. Yeah, it's a. It's We'll push it out online for everybody after that's done in a few weeks. Yeah, so it's a combination of getting um, information via telephone as well as text to online. Um, and then there will be sort of a um, right after that, a similar survey that won't be part of the statistically valid survey, um, but to try to capture even more people's um, feedback um, if they didn't participate in that um, initial survey, we'll ask similar questions. So that's all happening very soon um, and then um, we have uh, kind of in that time period where we've gone through this needs assessment process and we've got some additional initial recommendations we'll have another online survey and kind of a large in-person community event to get people's feedback on that and then throughout the process too where there's opportunities um, uh, for Mostly, I'll say staff here and others that go out and just talk to um, community groups um, or go to events, farmer markets, et cetera, and just talk to people about this process and share um, information that will happen as well. Um, so I'll say a little more about some of the other engagement activities in a moment, but that just kind of gives you a sense of sort of the flow of work and the flow of um, activities and engagement um, activities during the process. So maybe I'll stop there because that was a lot of talking. Even my, even I'm a little tired of hearing you. Um, and just see if you have any questions about any of that. I'll talk more about engagement stuff too in a moment. But um, short of that, yeah. Any questions about the process generally? Yeah. Just yeah. Um, so on the uh, chart, there's the you know, parts for it, and it's not every meeting, but it's like every other. So, so what's the function of the part for it in connection with this process? So. Parks Board is essentially serving as the sort of technical advisory committee. Um, so we'll be attending, for example, the October meeting, and then Parks Board will actually be the, the body that makes a recommendation to City Council to adopt the plan. I mean, hopefully, <laughs> we're hoping that Parks Board makes a recommendation to City Council to adopt the plan, whereas this group is more of just sort of general advising throughout the plan. But obviously, we want to keep here and Rob advised throughout the entire process and, and we'll have to have a lot of ownership over it. So for folks who don't know, the PRN Rab is our Parks, Recreation, and Natural Resources Advisory Board. Um, it's one of the city's boards and commissions advisory boards. And so they are like a council appointed board that um, discusses all things parks, rec, and natural areas. And they meet monthly um, in this room actually um, to do that. So, yeah, and generally the sequence will be, we'll meet with you, we'll present information to you, we'll get your feedback, we'll get your thoughts on things, and we'll go talk to the, um, the parks board, and we'll present pretty similar information along with what we heard from you, you know, especially if, if what we heard from this group was, oh, that's mostly great, um, but we recommend these additional things or these changes, that's part of what we'll represent to the parks board um, when we meet with them. So, yeah. It, yeah, exactly. and that um, question I know you mentioned earlier, you went, you guys did a, you know, a, a tour of all the different, um, uh, you know, stuff for the parks, but do we, is there any opportunity down the line for this, you know, committee to do it? Because I think that would be really helpful. That is, that is a great question. Um, yeah, we, it's not something that we talked about up to this point, but I mean, I certainly wouldn't rule it out. And um, we didn't go to, and we could, so we didn't go to all the city parks and facilities, but we went to a decent number of them. And um, Kira put together a really great like itinerary for us and sort of um, summary of what we were going to see, um, kind of where they were on the map. So um, I think that's a good thing for us to, to sort of think about whether it would be like a group activity, like pick a Saturday afternoon or something, or we give you sort of your self-guided map and go out there either individually or, you know, get together in small groups or do it. Um, how many folks think that would be sort of a 
a useful or desirable thing to do. Yeah, yeah, for a number of you. So yeah, I, I let's think about that and sort of figure out when that might make sense. That's, that's something we all learned. It would be very um, challenging to do all the parks in one day. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Someone say that they did that, which I was really impressed yeah. by. Um, I know you did a few. So. But we did a yeah. sort of a sort of a lot. Or two or we we like crammed a lot we, in. There was, yeah, there was like one or two that were sort of drive by, but we did like eight or yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Nine, in, 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 in in like two or three hours. Yeah, yeah. It was really, it was incredibly helpful for us, and it was great to have you know the staff there who operate those facilities for me it was yeah super helpful and i will say um, i'll say this in every city um, i won't say where i don't say it but <laughs> super impressed with just the level of um, quality and maintenance of the parks and rec facilities in the city so but it was yeah it was really great yeah. and it was fun to see the um the, the facilities that have had recent improvements you know that are like kind of almost brand new or maybe not as new, but still a great. So, yeah, yeah, very open. Yeah. Other other questions just about kind of the flow of work and what we're doing generally. Okay, good questions. Um, all right. So we'll talk a little bit more about community engagement on the next couple of slides. Um, so this slide goes into a little more detail um, about what I some of what I just said in terms of sort of what we're doing when. Um, so, and then I think I have another slide that says even more about, or not a lot more, but kind of singles out the initial engagement activities. So again, right now we're doing a number of things. That statistically valid survey that we talked about. Um, uh, we haven't done much planning for community event kind of No, that may that may be a fall. That may be a fall. Maybe a fall. <laughs> so we need to do a little more planning for that. I want to sort of that I want to say it fell by the wayside. But we need to do more planning for that. So I can't tell you too much about that. But the statistically valid survey is pretty much just underway. Um, there's, um, and I would say encourage your friends, neighbors, colleagues, like if they hear from the survey firm who will tell them that they are representing the city and conducting the survey, like encourage them to participate. You want as many people as possible to participate in this. So that's happening essentially now. It also precedes um, another survey that the city does. Is it every year or every two years? It's every two years. Every two years. The city does kind of a broader survey and ask about a whole bunch of different um, city services and facilities. It will include some questions about parks as well, parks and recreation facilities. Um, but definitely, you know, if you're talking to people, encourage them to participate um, really in both surveys, um, but selfishly, especially the parks on the system plan survey. So that's happening. Um, we will be conducting some um, interviews with. Um, says up here, uh, focus groups. So basically small groups of people that um, represent either specific organizations or interests or perspectives. So that will be happening over the next several weeks as well. Um, and so that'll be a combination of Kira and myself or other team members um, conducting those. There'll be kind of a mix of in-person and um, online. Um, so that's happening. Uh, and then we've got this meeting, we've got the first meeting with the park board. Um, so that's all kind of early stuff. Um, says June to September is going to bleed a little bit into October um, with both the survey and the stakeholder they they focus group meeting. And then October, November, um, that's kind of we, we're, we're working on the vision goals and objectives. So we'll be talking to you all about that. We talked to the park board about that. We'll be briefing the city council about that. Um, and that aspect of the plan won't just like stop right there. Like, okay, we did it, we're done. We will continue to update that as we move through the process. Um, so that will be, it will, the other thing I'll note, I don't know it's not particularly up here, but um, the city's got a website for this project or a web page for this project up on its website. Um, and so there'll be information about the process throughout um, the project up there and anything we produce um, once we've produced it and gotten it reviewed by city staff and it's kind of ready for public distribution, that'll go up there. So all the information will be available for people to review and comment on kind of throughout. So 
even though it just sort of shows the vision goals and objectives being reviewed by you all and the park board and the council, there is an opportunity for other folks to look at those as well. So then in association with the needs assessment and recommendations, um, a lot of that's kind of like the heart of a lot of the plan. So we've got a fair bit of engagement around that. A second online survey, a second community event, more kind of pop-up outreach events. So that's again going to existing organizations, meetings or events or activities. Um, and then again, uh, meetings with you all on the park board and then briefing with the city council again. Um, then kind of a similar set of activities to that second phase happens in association with the implementation and action plan in terms of CAC. We'll have a couple of meetings with you during that process because it would be a lot probably to sort of digest and tackle and discuss in one meeting. So we've got a couple of meetings in there, probably so we can kind of um, come up with some, have a discussion about initial recommendations, refine those, come back and talk to you all again. Um, and then also, again, talk to the parks board and council again. And then when we get into the, um, we've got a, a done all that work, we're preparing a document, we'll meet again with you all to review a draft of the document, um, meet with the parks board again, another city council briefing, so that, and that's all before the adoption process, which will include um, public meetings with, uh, uh, with the council and the planning commission. Yeah. I work on lots of plans for the planning commissions and policy, so I said, okay. but not so. Yeah, so that's sort of an outline of the activities, community engagement activities by phase of the process or by kind of um, portion of the process. Any questions about all that? You might not say too much more about the next slide. Talk about it. Yes. Um, it looks like one of the groups that you're doing outreach to is um, accessibility advocacy organizations and folks with disabilities. I was wondering if there's been outreach to the LOSD um, Special Education Advisory Committee? Not yet. Okay. But I actually have on my list to talk to you about that because I know you work with them. Well, I, have, I haven't worked with them, but I or have a I know someone who works there. with them. Yeah. Okay. Um, it might be good to have one of them join our focus. We have kind of a focus group that's focused on accessibility um, issues. And so that might be good news for me to see if they would be interested to contact or someone. Yeah, group. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Other, any other questions about this stuff? So just following up on Sarah's question, and if you're gonna answer this later, I've and we can just defer this, but I'm looking at the target audiences and the key audiences in the packet. Like, where do they fit into the, when do we start getting their input? They're not all represented on this commission by any administration. You're not going to hit them all in the survey because that's a one right. one thing. So, so, how do we get this input and at what point in the process will that? Yeah, so um, a fair number of them will be part of those focus groups we've been talking about. So we'll get some early input um, within the next several weeks about, hey, from your perspective, you know, what are the parts of the park system that are working best? Where are the gaps, both in terms of types of facilities or um, geographic areas um, or amenities at specific <laughs> facilities? So those will be the types of questions we're asking all of those groups. And then we'll also have some um, questions that will be specific um, to each, the individual groups, depending on what their focus is. Um, so, you know, the accessibility group, you know, that's for, to explore that topic in a little more detail with them. So for sure at the outset of the process, um, and then I think we, we don't necessarily have like another round of those same kind of meetings um, later in the process, but we'll definitely be reaching back out to those folks. Like I would say at a minimum via email, um, to say, hey, you know, we've um, worked on this aspect of the plan. We've got these preliminary ideas or recommendations. Do you have any comments on that? So I think, and then, you know, hopefully we'll hear from a pretty good variety of perspectives just as part of those larger scale community wide surveys um, and events. So I would, that's where I would at least start. A lot of times what we'll, what we'll do to kind of supplement stuff is if there's like a group that I feel like we're not hearing from, I'll reach out to them directly and see if I can like get five minutes on their agenda if they have like a set meeting. Because there are some groups that just don't have the capacity to 
come out and have another meeting in the evening or like take an online survey. And so if that's happening, I'll try to go to them and say, hey, I see you have a meeting set up. It's already scheduled. Can I have like five minutes on your agenda just updating on this project and, and hear back what you have to say. So if you feel throughout this process like, hey, there's this group or we want to know mm -hmm. what they have to say, but they're not coming to meetings or we're not hearing from them, um, that's something that, that I will do. Yeah. Sorry. How, yeah. are, how is the, I know they're doing or just finished the um, tree canopy plan mm -hmm. survey. How does that input tie in to this? Um, I mean, in general, the tree canopy work is handled by our planning department. So we do have our planning representative, not to put it on the spot of um, But that does, I, Megan in our office has been working with the planning staff. Um, she's not here tonight, but she might be online. But, um she's working on that project for parks and so can kind of help um be a, be a liaison between the tree planning but that's a good you know, that yeah. we'll have to look at what their survey kind of results were maybe you can get a copy of those and see what people said yeah um Ken. just a quick question do we have plans to add maybe some uh new liaisons to this i realized that we're going to have that perspective at all. We've 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 had two people to library. We, so we do we did have a youth member who was invited. I didn't hear back from them about this this meeting specifically. So I was gonna reach out to them as a follow-up and see if maybe they just couldn't make it or um but if, if there's someone else who we had a couple of youth members and so the one I reached out to initially said that they wanted to participate but didn't hear back for this meeting specifically. So um, we do also do a, a lot of work, the, the Parks Department has worked with a lot of the teens and the teen center that we run at Christchurch Parish. And then we also have um, the Youth Advisory Council and the Youth Leadership Council. Um, so those are other kind of avenues to make sure we're getting it from, from the youth. We've had better luck to at least have two because you yeah. know, everybody's busy with extra activities. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, one question, Matt. Um, I know one of the key audiences is um, communities with limited English proficiency, and I think you guys already have this covered, but are we going to plan on sending those surveys out in kind of different languages to kind of appeal to them? Yeah, it's a statistically valid survey. Um, but we have an uh, uh, ability to do that in English and Spanish or whatever. And we have a translation service that we work with. Um, typically what we do is we say, we have like this, actually it's on the agenda, I think. Um, yeah, I thought it's in, in, in our like right. the top three languages that are spoken in like us, we go right to school district um, data. And so what we usually do is it says, um, do you speak Spanish, for example, you can have this thing translated for you at no cost to you. And so people will then contact the, me or you know, what our product manager is and ask for a translated copy and that's a it's a pretty quick turnaround unless it's like a really long document so that would just send them a translated copy so. yeah that's a good question um and this may be a good um place for me to just ask folks you know to the extent you had a chance to review our the community data plan that we sent out in the packet a number of you've been referring to so that's awesome um so sort of the question is like, did you see anything missing? You know, for instance, we've been talking about some of the key audiences which are listed on page three. Is there any group or type of group or, or audience in the city that you're not seeing listed there? And we kind of looked at the, the range of um, and type of activities we you know plan to be undertaking to get people engaged in the process. You know, is there anything missing? So that's kind of the main question. Is it looking Pretty good, pretty pretty solid, or is there are there any gaps? So I'd love to hear from you all about that. Yeah, so I, I, the engagement plan makes sense to me, but it's kind of tangential on it, and it's and maybe it's obvious, but how is the plan intended to be used specifically, and like how was the twenty? Like these are all kind of part of the same question, and then how is the twenty twenty five plan being used, and what sort of measurements we had against like okay we had this plan and we made it 
whatever, 12 years ago, 11 years ago. Yeah. Like, how are we doing that? I mean, have we, have we done that? And, and, and that's not so much to look backwards, but forward, look forwards, just so we can think, okay, so this is the context in which we're, you know, what we're creating and, and how this document's going to be used. Because, like, I noticed there's, there's a discussion of budgets, which I mean, I know the work board doesn't have any control over the budget. Mm -hmm. So I, again, this committee doesn't either. Um, but I mean, are these the kind is, is that the sort of thing that this commission should be thinking about? I mean, or, or is this more like aspirational? Like, these are what we'd like to do. And we're hoping that the city can figure out a way to fund it in the next, you know, I mean, and, and I know that's probably a really big question that's not like a yes or no answer, but but I think it would at least help me personally kind of figuring out how should I be thinking about my participation in, with this group and what we're eventually trying to achieve. I guess I'll start by saying you can't control the budget. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you can, through working on this plan, set the goals and policies that guide how we set the budget. So if your goal and your objectives are like um, build more playgrounds, then we're like, okay, we use that and say, okay, we need more budget for playground improvements or like, I mean, that's kind of a simple answer to a way more complicated question, but that's, that's how this plan feeds into the budget question. Um, as far as how we use Parks Plan 2025, I don't know if you want to talk about <laughs> our, our matrix. <laughs> Well, with Parks Plan 2025, it was our guiding document throughout our operations, basically. Um, it set priorities for us to look at each and every kind of goal that was set. And then from there, there was objectives. And then, and part of the plan also had budgetary mechanisms established, whether it was going to be recommendations were to go out for a bond or to use SDCs or to leverage through partnerships, all kinds of recommendations through that plan. That plan also helped us um, with setting policies for the department. Um, it focused on um, different levels of um, how we were gonna accomplish the um, projects that we were going to do, both um, physical projects in the parks and facilities and also for the department itself. Um, and we, when we went through, we just accomplished a, a accreditation through National Recreation and Parks Association. We used that plan to guide us through that process. And then through that process, we also created a giant matrix on what, what we had accomplished, what was in process, and then what was kind of ongoing and would be, you know, continued through the future. Does that help? That's super helpful, actually. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Right. And not to put y'all on the spot too much, but maybe Re or Jeff, would you add anything to add to that in terms of how you all? use the current plan and expect to use the future plan? No, pretty much Jim pretty much hit all the high notes there. So yeah, and we you know there is a summary um in that state of the system report um of here are some of the projects that um, were identified in the earlier plan and that have been built, you know, and one of the things that the city did in terms of funding was to pass a very significant bond measure, which then was used to build a number of those projects or improve a number of facilities. So that plan really sort of had the basis for a lot of the things that the city has achieved um, over the last um, 10 or 12 years. Um, and the other thing I would just say is to some degree, these plans are always some, you know, to some degree aspirational, you know, because they are intended to sort of describe what is it we ideally want to achieve for the city. But at the same time, they need to be things that you can implement. So we will be identifying specific types of improvements that, you know, the, the, the staff and the, even the community says are needed, what they're going to cost, and what are the sources of money to um, to fund those, to make those happen. So um, that's another sort of type of information that will be in the plan. So that kind of 
strategic element of vision goals objectives is super important um, in terms of thinking about how the um, city operates and maintains its facilities and then the list of improvements is super important in terms of you know how are we going to meet corporate recreational needs into the future um, both you know as the city grows to some degree and we'll talk about that a little bit but also just to continue to maintain what the city has you know and make sure it continues to meet needs as the need might be might evolve even if there's not a huge increase in population um demographics change the population is getting older etc so we need to be thinking ahead of those things so hopefully that hopefully that yeah i think and i would love to see this plan be completely out i mean was low rec in the plan i mean kind of yeah, a Generally, recreation center and but, pools. but then yeah. it was basically said we want to expand our facilities right but you put that together and got funding for that. And that wasn't that funding didn't exist in 2012. So yeah. Yeah, and looking at, at this, um, it was developed in 2012, and then a lot of the newer parks and major improvements all happened after the bond. Um, it looks like yeah, starting in 2019. So I wonder that seven years between 2012 and 2019, like was there a big pivot when you realized there was gonna be some significant funding or was this stuff kind of in like the wish category? Um, you know, I'm just curious on how, how that plan shifted over that 15 years. I think a lot of the big yeah. stuff, like the building, or for, for those who don't know, when we say Lorac, we're talking about the Lake Oswego Recreation and Aquatic Center, which is not yet built, but is under construction um, out on Stafford Road on the golf course site. You can drive by it, it's pretty cool. Um, the big stuff like that is sits sits in your wish bucket until you pass it on actually. <laughs> right. Or find some other source of money. Yeah. I think right. also some of the things were on the list, but they were unfunded. Right. And when funding became available, like the placement of the uh, making East Saloon baseball and softball fields, turf, you know, it needed to be done and then funding was secured and we were able to do that project. So it may have called out for improvements, but you know, as funding came in, we were able to chip away at things. One one other thing that I know, at least I'm hoping for from this plan, is helping us um, refine and sort of prioritize our capital improvement project list. Um, every department city has like a cap capital improvement project list, and um, they can be varying degrees of organized. Um, but it would be this plan to be able to get a sense of. What are the projects? What are the sort of planning level costs? What's the priority level for that? And then help that sort of inform our capital improvement plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 as you say, one of the new funding sources is the demolition tax mm -hmm. that was implemented that allows us, like right now, we're painting all the outbuildings of Lusher. And that, that money didn't exist when this, this initially was, was come around. And to, just within the last three or four years, when we were able to tap into that and do do some of the things that for deferred maintenance that we just haven't been able to do for quite a while. And Jeff, can you explain that demolition tax and how it works? So when someone tears down a house to rebuild one, they, they pay a tax to the city for just deferred maintenance that goes into now park maintenance. Uh, for projects like like I said, like the leisure yeah. farm, we need to replace uh, you know, some dock, if, if we're redoing all of our restroom floors, so they're anti-skid, you know, and then just doing updates to some of the facilities that are that are aging. And before yeah. that, they didn't have to pay that tax, they just- Correct. Uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. And council did that and, and uh, took it towards uh, different maintenance for parks. And Sarah might have more. I was just gonna say before that, there are SDCs, which maybe folks don't know about, but when a new house is built, you have to pay um, into the SDC fund, um, system development for fund. Um, but there was kind of this gap where if you tore down a house and built a new one, you didn't have to pay anything. And so the demo tax helped kind of um, fill in that loophole. Um, yeah. Um, other questions or comments? Yeah. And just, and I think you have it covered because um, you have, you know, different organizations, you have the, you know, Accessibility advocacy uh, organizations for individuals experiencing limited mobility and disability issues, but just obviously with the population growth uh, for our parks, 
the city, you know, ADA compliance, but also more access for people that have disabilities to, to get to these wonderful parks and, and stuff like that and, uh, and parking. And then uh, with, the, uh, with the parks, uh, more sustainability finance is covered, and, uh, but uh, you know, EV charging stations at the parks that we have. Okay. I know they're on there, but just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of all things, I'm, I'll talk a little bit later about this, some of the things that we heard um, from um, other from city staff and other team members about things that are important for them to be um, integrated into this new park plan and sustainability and climate change was one of those things, you know, how to kind of make sure that facilities um, are built and maintained in a sustainable way and in a way that addresses climate resilience issues. So like that's definitely something that I think we all see as a priority in terms of um, keeping that in the plan. Right, that kind of gives a little bit of the charging station. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Just a, a question. How I didn't see it in the packet, and it could be there, and I just missed it. But um, evaluating the um, the equity of each of the uh, neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and how how are you how will that be gauged and um, evaluated to make sure that all the neighborhoods are being um looked at in an equitable way yeah so that's actually one of our kind of upcoming tasks as part of i had that one of those boxes was um, assessments and um, recommendations so one of the things we'll be doing is what we call the um, equity index mapping um, process so looking geographically and particularly in any areas where there are concentrations of folks either you know, with low incomes, community color, et cetera, but also just geographically, you know, what areas are well served um, by parks and recreation facilities and generally, and are there any that aren't, are there any when there are gaps? So that's a process that's coming out. It's like part of our one of our next steps is to go through that uh, right. mapping and analysis process. And um, I would go into even more detail, but I'm not the mapping man. <laughs> they get pretty, pretty good. Not too bad for getting out. Okay. <laughs> Guess we'll be working. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's coming up. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. Any other? I realized that I, uh, like two slides from now, we have the slide where I ask you all, "How's the engagement <laughs> plan?" Okay, you know, if you have any any gaps, I anything know. missing? Yeah. Like, why not? And the next slide is just like. Initial activities, which I talked about already too. I have a tendency to get ahead of myself sometimes in PowerPoint. So yeah, I mean, is there anything else from an engagement perspective when you look at this community engagement plan that you weren't seeing or you had questions about or you know, saw some gaps? I really think so about yeah. social media. Mm -hmm. How are you planning to use social media? So Robin, you heard um, introduce yourself earlier is our um, communications person and so Parks and Recreation, we don't have our own social media account, um, but we do have access to the citywide, um, like Instagram, Nextdoor, Facebook, I'm not a social media person, whatever all those, whatever all the things are. Um, and so we'll put together posts for like if there's a survey coming out or a community event or something like that, we'll use that to, to do outreach for those kinds of things. Yeah, good question. Um, I feel like I was going to say something else about that, but I don't remember that. Anyway, yes, that is like one of the ways we'll be promoting um, participation in things as well, including the survey, any you know community meetings or events we have, etc. Um, I'm not a social media guy either, except for Strava. I think somebody might mention Strava. So <laughs> that's like my social media. Uh, um, like, well, yeah, anything else? Um, yeah. All right, other, other thoughts or questions on engagement before we move on? Okay, so go to the next one. So I'm just gonna give you kind of a few highlights from that um, state of the system report and community profile um, document that we sent you all out. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna stop and kind of ask a question again, which would be a little similar to the one about engagement, which is, you know, what's missing? Is there anything you saw that you, wondered about or, oh, this doesn't sync up with sort of what I 
thing for know about this community or the park system or geez, I didn't see information about this thing or that thing. So that's going to be my question for y'all um, when we, after I go through a few quick slides. So just again, kind of an overall summary of um, what's in that document. Um, just some background information about the planning process that we're going through. Um, you know, a little bit of information about the history and geography of Lake Oswego. Community profile in terms of demographics, um, you know, how much growth is projected to occur here. I'll say a little bit about that actually on the next slide. Um, and how are demographics, how have they changed um, during the last 10 or 15 years? How are they anticipated to continue to change? And then a summary of um, the park and recreation facilities and system. Um, we actually have uh, quite a, a detailed um, inventory that we pulled together in large part from information the city staff already had, um, stuff that was in the parts 2025 plan, um, other observations by us, and then more information from staff. So we've got this detailed spreadsheet. We have not sent that out to you all yet. We just want to make sure that feel really comfortable with it, but that's something we can make available, but it kind of lists every park, recreational facility, natural area, and all the amenities um, within them, and to the extent we have um, some general information about condition of things, it's got that information. So pretty detailed inventory, um, and then the state of the system document just kind of rolls up some of that information to describe um, facilities in Lake Oswego. Um, also, a summary again at a pretty high level of uh, recreational programs and services and events um, that the Parks Department operates and, and manages. And then again, some kind of observations from um, consultant teams um, tour of sites and just kind of initial conversations um, with city staff um, around priorities for this planning process and just our our thoughts about the system that we've seen so far. So that's that's what that document is meant to be. It's meant to just sort of describe the system as it is now um, and sort of set the stage for how to think about what types of improvements or changes might be needed in the future. So that's what's in there. Um, so the next slide. Um, so this is just a little bit, a couple snippets from the community profile section. Um, I will also note that um, our consulting firm is also working with the city on a, a future housing needs analysis and what's called a housing production strategy. Um, so that was nice for us because we were able to pull in some information from that work we'd already done um, associated with the housing needs analysis and pulled into this report as well. So just kind of a few sort of observations. Um, over the last 23 years, um, the city's seen about an 18% increase in population. Um, cities in Oregon um, are, when they plan for growth, whether it's in housing or parks or other, other public facilities, there's a couple of different sources of population projections that they use. If they're outside the metro, the Portland metro area, they use population projections that come out of Portland State University, which prepares those projections for every county in the state outside of this region and all the cities. Um, I work on a lot of planning projects all over the state. These are always a source of contention, I will say that right now. Um, rarely is anyone happy with those projections. Um, either they're too high or they're too low. Um, within the Portland metro region, metro is in charge of that process. So metro, works, but not just they're not just doing it all by themselves. They are working with the counties and the cities within the region to project how much the region is going to grow as a whole, and then allocate that population or estimate that population um, increase amongst the counties and then the cities within the counties. And there is a fair bit of conversation about that. Um, when that happens, it happens every several years. Um, those are updated. Metro's projections for Oswego, Lake Oswego, in terms of future growth are pretty low. That's kind of what you see on this slide, right? And in the report, they're expecting um, only uh, like less than 2% increase in population um, over the next 20 years. So, um, and I will say also, there's not a ton of um, vacant or undeveloped land within the city of Lake Oswego, particularly within the city limits. There's some more. Kind of between the city limits and the urban growth boundary and what's called your kind of regional planning area that's, that's in there. 
Um, and the population projections are really just for the city. So there could be some additional population growth in those areas that are between the city limits and the urban growth boundary, but that's not captured um, in the projection projected growth for Lake Oswego. Um, Metro does that for the unincorporated areas. Generally, it's not kind of broken down by cities unincorporated areas. So that's there's a bunch of caveats that kind of go with those growth profit, those growth projections, but they are it's a pretty slow estimated growth rate for the city of Lake Oswego over the next five years. Doesn't mean that's ex those are projections, right? They're estimates. Rarely do things work out exactly the way anybody projects them thinks they do. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. These get updated every several years. Um, so they have to be sort of taken as like, here's what's being projected now, recognizing things we're gonna change. Um, but they're sort of our starting point, at least for thinking about how much additional population growth or more people will live within the city limits of Lake Oswego. And again, as part of that housing planning process, we've also looked at um, how much population, new population or new housing units really can the undeveloped land within the city accommodate. It's not a huge number either, you know. So I think um, that's just sort of the bottom line. Within the city limits, you know, unless you really start seeing things grow up a lot more, um, you're not going to see a huge amount of growth in the city limits. So that's an important thing for us to know. We're not like assuming we're going to like the city's going to double in size or increase by 50 percent in size in terms of population in the next 15, 20 years. So that's that was a lot of talking about that, but that's kind of where we are now in terms of those growth projections. So Matt had a hand up and Patrick. There's always sparked conversation. It just surprises. I, I mean, I think, I mean, there was a lot of house in 2020 that, you know, was designed to increase density. And I know the city's still wrestling with that, but if you look around, I mean, Mercado Grove was built like three years ago, and there's, there's Habitat doing something that way. And yep. there's a building, there's seven new actual units going in near the lake over on the uh, east side. And there's seven units close by in Lake Grove. It seems like, yeah, maybe there's going to be a little more density, and and, and so one uh, percent over twenty years. That's, that's not bad. I think one percent in the next two years. I, just, I mean, just from observation. So I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's it why seems I like you, kind of a, that's why I give you all the caveats around those numbers. Okay, yeah. but but so from what so but so given all that, should we still plan for basically zero growth and we get together all the time? I don't think. That would be necessarily prudent, um, and and even if you're not assuming a, a really significant increase in population growth, it doesn't mean there aren't going to need to be improvements to parks, right? And also, if you're thinking about new parks or expansions of parks, there's got to be land to do that on too. So I think that's the other thing that that kind of looking at this other information helps us sort of understand is where are those opportunities. So. Um, I think it's it's more a matter of like if these pop, if these population projections are too low, which a lot of people would probably say they are. Um, if they're higher, it just means you'll need things sooner. You know, and that's why yeah. it's helpful. So I think we just need to kind of have that mindset that like, well, we're probably not going to see explosive explosive growth based on these projections, but you'll probably still see some growth. And the other thing that's interesting about, and then I'll stop talking about it, the housing needs piece, <laughs> is that there's also a projected decrease in um, household size um, because households are getting smaller. This is a national and statewide and regional trend. And so what that means is fewer people in each house, and even if the, the number of people, in the, in the increase in number of people is low, there's a bigger increase in the number of households. Um, so that does sort of equate to some degree with um, potentially some increases in density of houses, maybe not population, but so that's kind of what we yeah, cool. side note from that other process. Yeah, um, kind of, and Matt kind of asked my question, what was sort of the plan B if it, it seems so conservative, you know, if it's say group five or six percent, and you know, what were we, were we kind of preparing for that? Because, you know, a lot of places are surging everywhere across the country and, uh, it sounds like you know, you kind of answer. Yeah, I think again, this kind of gives us at least a baseline 
but we probably need to be thinking about yes, what if things were to go faster? What would that mean in terms of um, new or abandoned facilities? More restrooms, yeah, more shaded structures, yeah. right? Park benches. Yeah, that's the other yeah. thing is you know, we still might need additional or new facilities, even just to serve the population you have, you know, of certain types of facilities. You know, there's not, yeah. So people may come here from other cities too. Yeah. So keep going. The good good questions, good points. Um, so uh, just in terms of this, or this, just like a little snapshot of you know what's the system look like. Um, citywide parks, um, twenty six sites, local parks. So we, the the city um, and the park plan sort of classifies parks into parks that serve kind of people citywide that have amenities or features that people are going to come to visit and use from across the city and then parks that are more like neighborhood parks, more kind of locally serving parks. Um, and then there's some special purpose um, sites. So you think about the tennis center, um, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, swim park on the lake. There's a, a, a number of the uh, adult uh, center. There's a number of center or facilities that are serving special purposes or, or specific populations. So, you know, the kind of overall numbers are 26 of the citywide parks, 19 of the local parks, and then eight special purpose sites. So that's just kind of a, a quick snapshot of that. Um, 600 acres of park lands, and then there are other um, public lands um, that support people's recreational needs within the city that aren't um, managed by the Parks Department or necessarily by the city. In some cases, somebody mentioned Grand Creek, right? So that's a it's not a city facility, it's a, a state facility. Um, so there's 600 acres of parklands and then another 270 acres of other sites that are helping meet some of those recreational needs as well. So it's quite a bit. Um, the next slide just kind of- um, One oh, comment, I'll just put a comment on this, which is just, just I one, <laughs> I'll interrupt you, but my, yeah. my one caveat on this is that this was, this is the classification system that Parks Plan 2025 used, and we um, have are doing some thinking about what's a better way to classify those sites, um, not just in terms of like what do we call them, but like what's their intended use and who are they intended to serve? Like, is it intended to serve mostly the local neighborhood and you're supposed to walk there, so maybe there's not really much parking, or is it intended to serve the whole community, and so we need to provide more different types of access facilities. So um, this, what we have in here now is from Park Plan 2025, but that's a process that we're going to go through exactly. during this plan. Yeah, that's a conversation we're already kind of having with staff about what's the best way to categorize and classify um, facilities within the system mm -hmm. and primarily related to how they're intended to be used or how they are used and how people will use them. So yeah. We have like a, some of them are developed parks and some of them are natural areas and some of them are called hybrid. It's a little, it gets a little complicated, but yeah. anyway, just a yes. note for the future. Um, Matt, do you have a comment or a question? Oh, that's what? <laughs> no, it's all good. I said, yeah. Keep keep asking questions or, or making up why you're here. So, um, all right, next slide is just a map that kind of shows you where all those facilities are um, within the city. I'm not going to say too much about this one. I mean, there's a number um, of sites that are located along the river. Um, this is also showing, I think. Yeah, this one shows parks that are like city facilities where we actually provide some sort of access to them, um, like parks or properties that are owned by City of Lake Oswego and operated by City of Lake Oswego, that would provide access to our darker green. And then there's a couple properties that are more faded, like Tryon, which is a state park, not a city park. And um, you can see like Receipt down there, which isn't yet developed. And so there's a couple couple places like that. This is ultimately going to be used in our, I don't know if any of you have seen the really old brochure maps um, from 2012 when Parks Plan 2025 was made. So in ten, tangential to this process, we are also remaking our brochure maps. Yeah. Um, so this will be the current version of this brochure. Yes. The Hallinan Woods map is not right. Hall, no, the Hallinan no. Woods map is, does not have that extra piece in there yet. Okay, but it will be in the brochure, right? It's it'll be a we don't have access access facilities to it right now, so we can't show it because it's not connected. 
It'll be in there. It'll be okay. All right. Yeah. And then, <laughs> Good and then you know the other thing we talked about um, is just kind of um, how to update how to use an update this map for kind of our planning purposes too. So there'll be some things that get added. Um, we'll be creating some additional or new maps um, as well um, that kind of build off this map, but also show future facilities that um, are being developed now or planned. Um, it will show the classifications, the revised classifications that we'll be talking about. So there's some more maps that'll be coming out of this for now. We're, Kind of using this uh, the brochure map and our initial um, state of the system report. We don't want to, we want to make sure that is sort of ready for consumption, but it will likely add some more maps into that in a future iteration. This also, this slide just kind of shows you some of the numbers of amenities throughout the city at different parts. So it's kind of the totals. Um, I will not read them all off. You can see them. Um, yeah. Yeah, and just one quick comment. Um, not only is it impressive of the number of restrooms we have in the in the city, but every time I've been to a park, the restrooms are always so clean. I mean, of any of any place. Yeah. 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 Nice restaurant. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. So this is kind of a again a couple snapshots of what the system looks like. Um, I will also send out um, these slides afterwards. Yeah. How do we see the twenty twenty five plan? It is up on. I have a link to it on the project web page. Oh, sure. Um, and if you want a hard copy, I can bring one to you at the next meeting and I can have you pick it up if you prefer hard copy. I don't think we have hard copies of any of our plans anywhere around. We do. And is there, so there was a plan that was originated, and then I'm sure it was revised over time with changes. Not really. Um, it more, it sort of stayed what it is and it made recommendations that were intended to be long term. And then what usually happens is every some number of years, these plans get updated. Like um, a full scale update, like yeah. this. Yeah, it's pretty typical. Like most cities, once they have a plan like this in place, it's a lot of work to, you know, go in and update the document and particularly in a comprehensive way. So the documents. And like the 25, 2025 plan hasn't had a full scale update until now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's more that the recommendations have been embedded into the city's practices, into their operations and maintenance and capital improvement projects. And that sort of, those are the things that have been updated as opposed to that 2025 <coughs> uh, planning document. Does that make sense? Right. So the 2025 document showed a skate park um, design in the location of the, or the aquatic center location. Yeah. It made a more broad, well, I don't even know if it did, because that was, that was what we had a skate park. Um, the old skate park was right, right up here with this little um, But, but <laughs> if, it, if we, if we had identified a need for a skate park during that planning process, rather than saying, build a skate park, it'll cost this much, here's the dime, put it here, what it would have said was like, of one of the goals is um, develop a skate park somewhere in the community to meet this need. And then you do a subsequent kind of design and planning and development right. exercise afterwards. So the, the plan, Park Plan 2025 doesn't really need to change because it just makes the recommendation that guides us to move forward with that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I just would like to see what it looks like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, check it out. It is online. I can send out a link to that too so, for folks who are yeah. interested afterwards. What I was going to say is a follow up. Um, yeah. Send out a link to um, like a direct link to that document, but also a link to the, the project, um, the web page for yeah. this project. Because, and that will be a good thing for y'all mm -hmm. to have and reference because we'll send you materials in advance of each meeting, but we'll also be uploading materials um, or links to materials to that site, and then you'll have access to stuff there too. So uh, that would be sort of a good thing to bookmark for y'all. I would recommend that. I don't have it. 
true confession about Mark for myself yet. So I want to do that. Um, so I have a quick clarifying oh, question. Yes. So this is from the, the 2025 plan. This map's from the this was, brochure. This is our in-progress brochure. Map. Okay. And then the stats are from the inventory. Correct? Okay. Yeah. So I think that must include the school district sites. Because we do not have 27 soccer fields. Uh, that must um, include. I think it so, uh, I think it is, just, just so everybody knows. I mean, uh, like up until time. this year, we we, we maintained we had an IGA and government agreement with the school district, and so we would maintain a lot of their things. Uh, some of those, like 27 tennis courts or 25, that's mm -hmm. going to include the schools yeah. as yeah. well yeah. because we physically we have George Rogers and Westlake. Yeah, and. and so, 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 and I think in the, the actual state of the system document, we kind of break that out. Yeah. And then for the purpose of this slide, yeah. Yeah. roll it up. Yeah. Like I just didn't want people exactly thinking right. we had 26 yeah. players. Yeah. No, thank you. And so, that's a, that was our sort of our recent um, <clears throat> separation about the IGA. So we're kind of updating all of our numbers. Yeah. So, yeah, really good point. All right. Um, next one. Yeah. So this is just another kind of snapshot of programs, programs and services and events. Um, so this was kind of again came from um, more, I'll say, disaggregated data that um, came from the city, and then we kind of rolled it up and recategorized it a little bit um, in this table and in the report itself. Um, but the um, kind of key facts came sort of straight from the city's um, brochure and summary of you know how many people are being served um, mm -hmm. each year by um, or in a given year by programs um, and um, facilities, and then you know really like um, uh, all of these almost all of these populations and in almost all of these um, seasons of the year these activities. Or these are being provided, you know, is I think that kind of take away um, from the, the matrix on the right is like every cell except for two of them have a dot in it. So that's kind of what it's yeah, telling it's you. But be. there is some more kind of again disaggregated um, or detailed data in the state of the system report related to this. But it just kind of gives you a sense of like the breadth of the types of recreational programs um, and facilities that the city is providing to different age groups um, in a different types of year. That's kind of what that is. And again, there's more detail to fill on that in the in the document that we sent out to y'all. You have two missing bucks just on the back. Yeah. Like, they should just be plus. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Number five to use the <laughs> is there a general sense of how full those programs are? Like, if there's, are they at max capacity? Are there, like, are there spots that need to be filled? Are there programs that go completely empty? I think generally it seems like the kids' programs, from what I understand, are very full. But I'm just wondering, like, is there a way from enrollment to tell where gaps could be? So programming in general, um, I we do have several types of programs that are full to capacity that are limited by our facility lack of facility space. Okay. So when, for instance, is Lesher Farm, we, we could pack that farm morning, noon, and night with camps and programming, but we don't have the facility or capacity at that site for access, primarily because of parking issues and just limited space within the facility. We lose the milking parlor as a camp spot an outdoor classroom, which is basically a lean-to off a tool shed and, and inside of a garage space for programming. And those those programs are packed all, all, all the time. Um, things like our camp, some other summer camp programs, we rent the school district school to hold those programs. 
in. So we'll probably continue to do that. But as we add the Lorac and more different types of activities, such as aquatic, and uh, we'll have a little bit more space, not much, but a little bit, we'll be able to have more programming there. Because right now we rent a church to put everything in. And then as we expand, we'll probably be putting more programming at the adult community center on the weekends and in the evenings. So it's a work in pro progress as we grow with the community needs. That's great to know. Yeah. Kind of something I can yeah. about. It's, also, a, it's a little bit like playing chess sometimes yeah. where to quit. I was gonna say from personal experience, if there's not a minimum met, they'll drop the class and we fund. You know, if, if it's a tennis lesson or a gym class or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tennis exactly. is a good example as well. We we have four courts and they are full at most of the time. We, we have uh, most of our camps. We've expanded for youth programming to the courts at Lake Ridge for our summer camps. So we use both outdoor and indoor facility for things. And youth programs seem to be our, our largest sector of programming that this community needs in its out of school time. And that again is one of the aspect of the system that we'll be looking at is what are the types of programs being offered? Yeah, what are the most viable types of facilities are needed? City was going to provide more of those. Um, are there some changing recreational trends that would sort of guide the city to do some additional different things? So that's that's another piece of how that next phase of work is going to get that. Yeah, that's a really good question. All right. Um, I've got just a couple more slides from the uh, state of the system summary, and then we'll just kind of see if there's any other questions about that, or gaps, or anything like that. So, next one. so this is this slide and the next one just sort of talk about initial observations based on reviewing a lot of materials from the city and also going on the site tour. So that's actually um, the list of places that we went, although let's see, we didn't actually tour the golf course. Construction. Under construction. Um, uh, we went everywhere else, right? Um, we drove by this village. You're right. We drove by. Uh, I got out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, While we were driving. <laughs> no, the car stopped. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so those are the ones we visited. You would have liked it about here. Because three and a half hours. Three and a half hours, yeah, which was awesome. You actually get to see uh, pictures of uh, us in one of those. Um, so that was great. So we tried to kind of visit sort of a range of different types of facilities um, local, you know, or neighborhood parks, citywide parks, natural areas, special purpose facilities. So just to give our team um, one a sense of, kind of what the facilities looked like um, and um, and what types of amenities were there, you know, just get a sense of the breadth of the, the city. So, so those were the ones we looked at. Um, and then sort of at the tail end of the state of the system report, we kind of laid out some initial observations, which is on the next slide. Um, so I'll just kind of talk about these very briefly. Um, and then other than kind of you know, next steps is the last really substantive slide in the presentation. Um, so one, again, like overall impressions, really excellent system, you know, great set of facilities, very well maintained, um, uh, the maintenance and improvements, you know, just, I would say top notch. I mean, especially like the quality of landscaping and planting, you know, a lot of this, the city's facilities really, really great. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that there aren't is room for improvement in specific areas or there aren't some additional um, staffing needs um, just related to monitoring what's happening in the parks. Um, you know, there's always, there's always some of that. Somebody mentioned, I think it was Matt mentioned the, the bike skills park um, up off of oh, yeah. the Lucas. You know, so, I mean, that's a pretty tucked away place, right? So there's been a certain amount of vandalism up there. And so there's there's always going to be issues with 
maintenance and operation of some of these facilities associated with things like that. So that's not a quite perfect, but really, really good is sort of some of the observations around um, just maintenance um, and and quality of the facilities. Um, involved community, you know, really active, um, involved recreation programs and volunteering. There's some really good stats in this report um, and in the city's other documentation about just the number of volunteers and volunteer hours that get spent um, helping maintain parks across the system. High level views, um, Jan just talked about that, you know, and, and the fact that um, a lot of programs are full and they're kind of limited by the amount of space. So, um, use, I talked earlier about just kind of a, a desire um, on um, staff side to better integrate sustainability and resiliency into um, future maintenance and improvements of parks. And when we're kind of looking at the, this next piece of the plan, the goals, objectives, um, et cetera, like that's something I would expect you're going to see some changes to compared to what's in the park plan 2025. Uh, natural resource management has been, I think, a pretty high priority for the city and um, some great improvements um, to some of the city's um, natural areas and expansions of those. So that was an observation. Um, I talked a little bit about, you know, there's there's always going to be some things that happen in parks um, that are not allowed or always um, uh, what you want to see. So, you know, enforcement of, um, of activities is important and a challenge. Um, accessibility, definitely a need for accessibility improvements within parks. Um, two parks, um, the parks department doesn't sort of manage the roads and sidewalks that keep people into the parks, but they do manage the improvements within the parks. So, um, uh, that's definitely sort of a, an area for improvement. That can be a very like, detailed and intensive process to go through sort of a full um, like ABA um, planning process, but that's an important aspect of things. And then um, I think Kira maybe mentioned it earlier, you know, there's some parts that serve sort of this, the whole city. And so people travel to those parks. And so um, is there enough parking to meet those demands that some of these campus walk to the park or to the park? So, that's a potential issue in some parks, maybe not all parks, maybe less so for the more neighborhood oriented parks, but um, but it can be an issue in some of those citywide parks. Um, so those are just some observations, you know, by us. I mean, I think again, like you all are lucky to have a pretty top-notch um, park system in, in my opinion, but that doesn't mean there's not some room for improvement or things that the city can really focus on in this parks plan 2040 in terms of enhancing at both a uh, kind of programmatic and policy level, but also at a maintenance operation and improvement level. So um, I will stop talking for a while um, and just kind of put it out there and say, hey, you know, if you if you manage to, to get through this report, or even if you haven't, is there anything that you didn't see reflected in there or you saw reflected that you're like, I don't know if that's the way I think about this or gaps, anything? That question out there. Some of this. I think he already, some people mentioned or commented on earlier, but I'm interested in any other comments you all have. Yes. I have a comment or question. I think you just touched on it um, there towards the end. But I, what I didn't see in there was sort of um, the getting to the parks, right? And I think mm -hmm. that's not within the purview of the parks um, and rec. But can it be called that somewhere in this um, process? You know, I'm thinking about this wonderful skate park that's being built on the edge of town. Um, Simon is cutting back bus service. You know, I'm thinking of middle schoolers, you know, who would love to use a skate park who can't get there. Um, you know, and it, everything relying on a car. So I know that, again, it, that we just kind of set those parameters that that's not you know, in the realm of parks and rec, but. Can it or should it be part of the discussions around creating a park system? I mean, you can build it, but no one will come if they cannot get there, right? So, is a part of it sustainability? You know, I mean, all yeah. of this all ties into you know just being able to get places around our city, which isn't always easy from one end of the city to the other. Yeah. 
And I think that's one of the reasons we wanted to have representatives from some of the city's other advisory boards, transportation, sustainability, EEI. I mean, we want we want to think about this holistically, and, and parks are just one element of the sort of public realm and the way that people use our city. And so <clears throat> while we can't necessarily control that, um, our hope is that by at least having that conversation, we can influence it subtly, <laughs> or maybe not so subtly, and and um, you know, folks, transportation folks can go back to your advisory board and say, hey, you know, we're having this conversation. How do we how do we work together? Um, and and staff are also working together. You know, Evans here from many in the transportation engineering department. And so we want to make sure that if this is a priority. If access facilities to parks are a priority that's set by this plan, then how can we as staff work? Well, we can't directly work on those projects. How can we work with our engineering staff to um, make that a priority? Yeah. And I think, you know, I would echo all that and just say that that part of the plan talks about vision, goals, objectives, you know, people being to, able to get to access parks, like, and certainly would be, you know, an overarching um, goal or value that's embedded in the plan. And like, Chris said, there's other arms of the city and region that are working on those things, and it's, uh, it's incumbent a little bit on us to get that information back out to the folks who are. Um, and the city has, um, in addition to, so cities have, most of them have a plan like this, right? A park, a park system plan. They also have in Oregon a transportation system plan that guides the development um, and improvements to the transportation system. Then they have a it's called a comprehensive plan. People heard that term or familiar with that. That's like the overarching policy document for the city. It's in a way oriented to land use, but it has chapters related to housing, economic development, um, public facilities, parks. And so this document is sort of like the parks element in a way of the comprehensive plan, but that's where a lot of those kind of larger um, policies come together and where there ought to be some integration of those things. So I think that's another thing sort of to think about is like, um, should there be, based on what we talk about in this process, some recommendations around um, updates to the city's comprehensive plan policies, you know, that get at those connections between parks and the transportation system, where housing is built, et cetera. So I think really good. We do like Kira said we do want to think about this whole stuff. Like, yeah. Um, I can't remember if the trails and pathways master plan was mentioned in this or if y'all are referencing the cities. I mean, it's one of the things that yes. I, I asked that I asked you to review. I've seen yes. you reviewed. We and, have reviewed. Um, yeah. But that most of the trails and pathways in Lake Oswego are managed by the engineering department, not parks and recreation. Obviously, the ones that are within parks. That's different, but it is a little bit. It's a little bit more complicated when we're talking about um, like the, the asphalt paths that kind of serve as sidewalks in a lot of neighborhoods in Lake Oswego. Those trails and pathways those are like engineering for their purview. Yeah. So that document that is um, something that we are reviewing as part of this process, but we're not updating that document explicitly as part of this process. Um, so, uh, but there's clearly you know, a connection. We do you need to overlay that on the map mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, be able to take a broad view. And yeah. uh, the other the flip side of that brochure map will be the trails mm -hmm. map that does show some of those connections. And I, and I think that is, um, you know, we could produce a map because we have that information in the geographic information system, GIS mapping system. That we could Plot that down um, on that map just to give people a sense of how those things are. Um, let's see, Julie or May. Oh, I just was wondering, I didn't see anything about park structures, like maintenance facilities, all the infrastructure that it is taken to do all of this work. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't that be part of the master plan? So there will be kind of an element around maintenance and operations um, of the park system. Um, and I can't remember sort of what Park Plan 2025 is about, like those facilities, which are here, right? The large scale you know, sort of headquarters of the city. Um, that's a good question. Definitely we'll talk about those operations in terms of sort of the facilities to house 
equipment, vehicles, et cetera. I'm not sure how much we get into that. Well, there's a yeah we we a cost for it. yeah we ninety percent of the park staff maybe ninety five work out of this building we store our trucks here our equipment's all here and then we, we mobilize to the parks. George Rogers has like a little garage area where we keep a mower but no vehicles. We we'll, we'll keep like our in park vehicles. We got a lot of electric vehicles that we do our trash runs and lift, but we we only have like maybe two of those maybe three. Now the golf course will have its own maintenance. Uh, Building uh, just because they need to be on the site once it's done. And other structures that are on in those parks that uh, um, just curious, like the picnic shelters and stuff, or mm -hmm. or any historic structures that need to be identified and and understood, Maybe like the smelter or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to represent my yeah, yeah. my board. Yeah. 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 understanding all that. Yeah, I mean, that's something we'll take a look at. Yeah, it might be good to identify which as kind of one of the columns in our inventory. Like, is there a historic structure or some yeah. sort of historic yeah. monument yeah. or a park? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You might have well, or, in the notes uh, section, uh, but uh, we can definitely add a column just okay. specifically calling out or, historic sites as well. Or, you know, after 50 years, it, you know, they're Sites can be considered historic. So, mm -hmm. you know, is there anything within that 45, you know, 2045 that would, that would, that would come, that would, would qualify? Mm -hmm. I'm sure some of the structures of Lusher would fall under uh, that. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. The one that does have a lot of, yeah. Yeah, really good question. So I'm doing, I'm gonna do a really quick time check, y'all. Doing great. Um, uh, we want it, we had reserved on the agenda a few minutes for public comment. We do have a couple of folks online. I don't know if they'll have comments to make, but I wanna make sure we're able to do that. Um, we'll wrap up next steps to go real quick, um, but maybe we'll just a couple more minutes if there's any other thoughts, comments about, again, sort of the observations in that state of the system report and anything didn't see or want to make sure you see um, reflected there or in the parts inventory. So I think the last couple of questions are kind of helpful for us to think about that as well. But any other kind of quick things for the yeah just, just quick thing the other thing we have besides our you know at the parks we have uh, obviously really clean restrooms but in the city more than most other cities not only in Oregon but anywhere is we have public art. So is there any opportunity you know, for public art, and obviously a lot of it's because of the one and a half percent, but in, in the future, yeah, budgeted at all. Well, and we're in new development projects are required to put public art in using the one and a half percent that like goes in, goes back to the project, and that's how we purchase art for that project. So, awesome. like the so, recreation yeah. center, for example, and, and yeah. Just, yeah. But yeah, really good question. Good thing to think about again, kind of thinking about the policy objectives. Uh, any, anything else? Any other thoughts on uh, this topic? Yeah. I think generally the, the going through the whole plan with the objectives that are really clear. The thing that I'm still a little fuzzy on is like what kind of input we will be getting, like what kind of spreadsheets are we getting what kind of tools are we getting what are we supposed to like wrap our heads around uh -huh. to give input on and it would be really nice to just get a little summary of that if not today in the future okay. yeah we do that and i think what might be helpful i don't know if it's embedded in the sometimes we have kind of a um in the engagement plan we'll sort of um, we'll list out or we'll do it separately and i'm not seeing it just like um, i mean i'm seeing it but not listed in that way of at each meeting of the cac like what are the things we're going to ask for your input on and how you know like what's the information you're going to get and what are the types of questions we're going to ask you some of that will get a little refined as we move along but i think that would be a helpful thing and it's something Together. Yeah. yeah, I think Matt mentioned this beginning. This was this is just sort of our first more introductory, and so yeah. it will be an add sort of maybe like a meeting objective 
thing on the agenda so that you're really clear on what we want from you. Yeah, yeah. But I think getting. object. I think you guys did a great job of outlining objectives. I think the thing I'm most unclear on is like what kind of input will we get and what kind of output are we expected? Like, okay. are there reports? Yeah. Are there script, whatever mm -hmm. that is, just so we. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it would be again. I've done this on <laughs> other projects, um, and I think it would you know not think that much. Do it for this one. It'd be a good idea. Would be just kind of, uh, kind of, uh, kind of schedule and list of agenda topics and information you'll be getting associated with each meeting. So it would be meeting number two. The objectives are to do this. The materials you're going to get are going to be these reports. The types of questions we're going to ask you are going to be these things. Um, and we could kind of, I think, line that out um, for your remaining meetings, um, at least at a kind of high level. Um, and then you kind of have a good sense of like, and then as we get closer to the meeting, you'll get the stuff and we'll be a little more specific. But I think we could give you a good high level summary if it is. That would be helpful. Yeah. yeah. I have an engineering thing today. Awesome. <laughs> cool. All right. I have one quick question. Yes. Were there any benchmarks considered, or does Lake Oswego have a sister city or other cities that they aspire to be? The Parks Plan 2025 had what we call like level of service um, standards that are it's kind of like, I'm not going to get exactly right what they were, but it's like um, X acres of parkland within a quarter mile walking distance of each home or something like that. So uh, there's sort of general level of service standards um, and those were informed. I wasn't around when they when that plan was developed, but those were informed by my understanding from like national benchmarks. So the National Parks and Recreation Association has like recommended. They service they do. They don't. They tend not to use them or promulgate them as much anymore as they used to because they can vary so widely by community to say like oh every city should have this number of acres of neighborhood parks per thousand people. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of standards for this number of acres of community park or natural areas um, per thousand people. Um, the National Recreation, National Park and Recreation Association um, have those kind of standards. They're not used as much by local communities anymore just because they're so, um, they, they vary so widely. Um, I would say more often, um, what you see now are kind of proximity standards, like everybody should be able to walk or bike to a park within 15 minutes or so from their house like that. Those proximity standards are used more often. And then not just like proximity, but proximity to what, you know, what kinds of facilities are important to have at a neighborhood park? Um, what other kinds of facilities are important to have at your citywide or community parks? Um, so I, I don't, you know, know that there are kind of benchmarks around that. There are some, like you said, in 2025, it's hard to say now like what we might come up with in this park plan. Um, but I will say that that's sort of the level of service analysis and um, those standards are a little more attuned to like, what are the specific recreation needs that have been identified by the community? Um, and where do people live and what can they get to, you know, in a reasonable amount of time? Hopefully that helps. That's a very vague answer. And I think from a staff standpoint, the, 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 the people that we hire, the people that we train, and I'll speak for our, our facilities and our services and our programming and our other departments, I think we aspire for people to want to be us. And, and I think that our staff really goes out that every day. And, you know, the comments about the restrooms and about our programming and, and, and their services. I, I think people are here because they genuinely like to do that and they want to do it well. And so. You guys want to be the benchmark. <laughs> <laughs> benchmark somebody else. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and Matt, what's yes. our next meeting? Good question. So we've got one person um, online, yes. and I just want to see if they have anything to ask for or add to the conversation, and then we'll talk about that. Um, Stephanie, I just allowed you to speak, I think, so <laughs> we can hear you. Okay. Um, that's, that's a dangerous thing. Can you still hear me? Yes. <laughs> we can hear you. 
Okay. okay. I, Two minutes, but I'm brief, I Just briefly, I am the chair of um, the board for Friends of Lusher Farm. And we just want you to uh, look closely at Lusher, which is a very unique park in the system. And um, it is poised to have some changes with Clackamas County. And we will be following your process closely with Lusher in our hearts. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. Did anyone else last chance for, for a public comment online? I'm not seeing any hands. Okay, thanks, Stephanie. Thank you. So yeah, last bit of this meeting is to kind of wrap up and next steps and including talking about uh, when's our next meeting. Um, we don't have, um, I'm going to punt that to Kira, but first yeah. I'll just say we don't have a specific date and time on the calendar yet. Um, We're looking for at uh, towards like late October, early November. So um, my next step after this meeting is is to talk to Matt and look at our calendars and, and get that on the schedule and try to give you more notice. Um, but the question on that is, does this time generally work for everybody? I can send out a poll or something if there's a hesitation. This is generally what I've heard is the best for most folks, but um, I'm open to other suggestions. Are you going to try to do it again on the Tuesday, though, or theoretically? It's possible. No. I, my guess is that the, the days may vary a little bit. Um, our parks, usually Tuesdays or every other Tuesdays are city council, and our parks board meetings are on Wednesdays, and I have a lot of other boards, board representatives here who's meetings fall on days and I'm not Wednesdays. I don't have them all Wednesdays. memorized. Yeah, so. yeah I think Wednesday. we're like we're generally gonna try to think of Thursday. A time of day that Maybe seems Thursdays. to work um, <laughs> and not conflict with other boards and commission and council meetings. Yeah. yeah. So depending on like the week that that makes the most sense for the meeting to fall in given the pace of our work and when we're gonna have things ready to review it it might end up varying a little bit. I think the extent we can you know, try to stick at least maybe a majority of the time to a specific day, assuming that's not a day that doesn't work for a bunch of people. That would be nice to try to do that. But, I'll, you know, um, so. One of the things I'll, I'll follow up with, I have a list going, um, is just sort of a little poll on like what days are best for most people. And, you know, to tell me now, but, but, you know, just let me know and, and we'll see if I can find one that we can be consistent with. And then you're also going to check the other boards to make sure those things. A lot of lot of calendars to open. <laughs> I was just um, being a working professional. Um, five fifteen or five thirty would be a little easier. Yeah. Okay. Than five o'clock. Okay. Just sure. Lots yeah. of meetings go to five. Yeah, we yeah. can do a five thirty to seven thirty. Does that work for everyone else? That'd be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry for people with young kids. <laughs> Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, all right, so just kind of a quick recap on next steps. Some of these things I talked about already, um, but again, we're kind of getting started um, on those stakeholder focus group meetings. Um, we're scheduled to do eight of those um, with, again, different groups, kind of ranges from, I don't know what the most people we have in any one of those is, maybe eight. eight, eight. You know, so it's kind of small groups, but up to about eight. So, and they're organized by a uh, topic or uh, perspective. So those are getting started. Um, the survey is getting started right now as well. Um, we'll have our first kind of briefing or meeting with the, the park board on October 18th, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, got a lot of meeting dates in my head. So when I get one right, it's really good. Um, and then our next step um, in terms of uh, kind of work products for you all to review um, will be the strategic framework. That's also what we call goals, objectives, um, goals and objectives on the earlier slide. Um, so that's kind of the next more substantive thing we'll produce. And we'll have you to review, and that'll be the subject um, of our next meeting with you. And so um, TBO in terms of the exact date, but we will let you know as soon as we can do that so that you get plenty of time to the plan and schedule for that. Um, so that's it on that. Any any questions, thoughts, parting parting comments? I have one. I yeah. spoke too much tonight, I know. 
but I just, I just want to thank you guys. Uh, had very thoughtful questions. I didn't feel like there were personal agendas. You were respectful to our staff, to the consultants, and to yourselves. And honestly, it's one of the best public meetings I've ever been in in the 33 years I've been doing this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. Excellent job. It's it's really, and it's nice to see all of you here. So, yeah, so thank you for being here. All right. Well, let's go next time. Exactly. Seven o'clock. Uh, <laughs>